of the show today. We're actually heading back to the Adirondacks again with Johnny Thorpe and Jason Fox. And he's going to show you the methods and techniques that he uses for Fox, a hole in the tree set, a uh, spring hole set, a lot of different sets um, that he makes that uh, I think you're going to enjoy. And, and, you know, this footage was filmed probably around 05, maybe 05, 06. And uh, being able to bring it to you almost, you know, 15 years later, 16 years later is uh, a joy for me. And um, hopefully you're going to enjoy this show and, and enjoy watching Johnny uh, when he was out there on his line in the Adirondacks. So with that said, let's get started right now. Hi there. I'm Johnny Thorpe and we're going to do a video on fox trapping here, both reds and grays. And uh, we got a red there and we got a gray we're just pulling off the stretchers. I'm going to show you my methods for catching foxes, both reds and grays. And uh, I think you're going to be enlightened somewhat because there is quite a bit of difference when you're trapping reds and grays. And we're going to cover that in this video. And uh, you can adapt these these methods to any foxes you have. Don't matter whether they're reds, grays, silvers, platinums, or crosses or what. They're all foxes. And we'll make sure you can catch them all. So with that in mind, we'll, we'll get out of the line here and we'll set some traps. Probably figure a woodpecker made that hole. Don't worry about it whatsoever. Once you got them in there, they're almost like a spring hole set there forever. You don't have to worry about drilling the hole after that. It's a real simple set to make. And simple is the way to go. Keep you in business. Don't confuse the issue. Don't let anybody tell you you can't catch foxes with this set. You can. That's not hundreds and hundreds of them. In this type of country. You wouldn't want to use it out in the farm country for like that. Just go back here, just about all of your pan, about spread of your pan if you got it spread from your pan from your pan to the end of the tree. Now I take these and use a two two inch fence staple. So I'm sure I got some with me. Don't use an inch and a quarter now, because once in a while you're going to tie into a coyote, and a coyote will pop that same uh, inch and a quarter stick, and use a two inch length stick. Right on the tree, just like that. Go right the tail. It's about as simple as it gets. Sets made in places like this that keep working pretty late in the season without any buckley holes or anything. So as long as it's down level and now one thing I want to point out. You don't ever use urine as a cover center on this set. The whole idea of this is to keep the animal's attention off his feet. Figure a red fox would be something like a one of those blonde jokes about chewing gum and driving a car at the same time. The fox can only keep his attention on, on that hole and where your lure is. He's not watching his feet. It isn't like he got everything laid out on a, a plate on a table for him uh, for supper like you have with a dirt hole set. I'll guarantee you, you'll take a lot of foxes with this set that uh, you can't take with a dirt hole. It's been wised up to a dirt hole. 
after other guys have pulled out. Trust me on this. The rubs come off when you handle it or I like this little stick better than this. Get a nice dry stick. Notice I have this stick a little bit longer and that hole is deep. The reason I do that is so I can snap that stick off after I put it in there. It goes in there. Now, coon or something comes along, you can't get that stick out. As simple as that. The set is done. Do not, use, do not try to better it. There's nothing you can do to improve it. That is it. That set will kill you a lot of foxes, especially gray foxes in the bush. It'll kill you a lot of red foxes in this country, too. It isn't a farmland set. It never was, never will be. If you're trapped in the bush country like I do, you're going to find it very, very valuable. That's about all I'd have to say about that set. As simple as that. places. And in these sand traps you can dig these holes nice and deep. It will make a box really work to get out of their lure. We've got a Duke one three quarter here offset. And I've left this in new condition purposely so it'll show up a little bit better in the set. Ordinarily we dye these and they aren't nice and bright and shiny right out of the box like that. But we're doing that for, for a reason. I think maybe it'll make it a little bit easier for you to see what we're doing here. And these earth anchors, these are 18 inches. You have no problem with anything never pulling these, even in this plaster and thing. I'll even hold a coyote, no problem. I never like to anchor right dead under my trap. Because, as I told you before, in a fox, I like to reset these kill patterns. And when you catch a fox, it doesn't mess up your set. So I'll usually put that in there and draw it back out where I figure is the length of the chain and drive my earth anchor. Okay. Always make sure you pull up on these to set up. Some guys say, well, box will pull up and set it. Don't you trust that? Because if you believe that, sooner or later, you're going to get messed up. I like to carry these with me. Already set, make it a little bit faster for them putting in a lot of them in a day. I'll just preset them and run a little wedge of silver dirt in there. Got my earth anchor and everything already set. And I haven't got to bother to put it in there. You don't get anything more out of this video. One thing you want to get out of it is bedding your trap. And sand isn't the best thing to bed your trap in, but it'll do, especially in the fall when you've got some moisture in the ground. In the sand country, I like to use a, some kind of a trap pad. These are a piece of old muslin, heavy duty old muslin. But you'll notice how I've got that bedded all the way around that. This is the most important part of dirt trapping, bar none, bedding that trap. That trap wants to be bedded like it was cast in cement. Trust me on that. So we're trapping red foxes. I prefer to have that down in there a little bit. So we got a little recession. But the red fox has a habit of setting the lowest Stepping in the lowest pace, place on your pattern. Not necessarily a gray, but reds always like to step in that little low spot. That's a plus if you're trapping red foxes. But it doesn't really hold true on grays. 
I kind of like to really pack that sucker like that. Now I got a set that's going to last. I don't care how much it rains on it, snow, sleets, hails, or whatnot. That sucker's going to be worth it. Going to be worth it constantly. I've heard guys say that, well, Jesus, if I'm trapping gray foxes, I want to use a gray fox shirt as a, a cover set, suspicionary word, not red fox. And, uh, or I want to use red fox shirt, and I'm like, but that, that's all bullshit. It don't matter if you're using a gray fox or red fox or coyote urine or dog urine, I guess that's all going to serve the same purpose. The only, the only exception is cat urine. Do not ever use cat urine on your fox sets. Or your coyote sets is a cover set which on your trap pattern or anything you're going to have a lot of problems because that you're going to use cat here around use it down the hole use it as a lure and not as a cover set you know well, i used to listen to a lot of pete rickard stories and he was my idol you know he's, he taught me how to trap foxes and as a kid i went down there i trapped muskrats and i don't know quite how old i was maybe 10 12 years old at that time i've been trapping one Muskrat. I started trapping muskrats when I was seven, year, seven years old, going to school trapping muskrats. And that was during the Second World War. Muskrats were worth big money. Got to get two and a quarter for muskrats, and that was a lot of money. Christ, the guys in the defense plants were only making a buck an hour. And so I got pretty good at catching muskrats. And I got a hold of a copy of Fur Fish Game. I went through, and there's all these ads in there. Pete Rickard didn't have to have one in there at that time. There was Daly and Butcher and Hall Baker and, and uh, they all sold more. And so I, Butcher, I, I was thinking of going and sending an order, I think, for send my dollar and get a bottle of Bobcat for Okay, Butcher. Somebody told me about Pete Rickard down the other end of town. So why don't you just go down there? Pete Rickard makes the worst. He's got a big supply out. He makes the worst. I'd never heard of him. So found out where he lived and down I went with my dollar. And I had my Gibbs two tricker trap. And I went in there and I said, what can I do for you? I said, well, I got me a bobcat trap and I want to get some bobcat where I want to catch a bobcat. He says, is this your bobcat trap? I said, well, I figured it would hold on. He said, well, he said, I don't think so. He said, that's a Gibbs two tricker trap. He says, that's from my scratch. He says, what do you want to catch a bobcat for? I said, well, I just want to catch something big like that. And he said, well, we don't have any bobcats around here. He said, what you want to do is trap foxes. He said, I think you like catching foxes a lot better than you do most crap. I said, okay, you got some fox scent. And how do I catch them? He said, well, first of all, you've got to get rid of that trap. And he kind of took me under his wing. He took me out back and he showed me how to make a dirt hole set. And he gave me half a dozen number two victor traps give them to me. He gave me a bottle of fox lore and he gave me a bottle of suspicion remover. He gave me a trowel, hand trowel and a sifter. He says, uh, of course I said, well, pay me my dollar. He said, no, he says, you take that dollar and go buy a pair of pink canvas gloves. So right after school the next night I was out my run up on the mountain there in the back of home, the back of the high school and I set three of those Victor Coil traps and the girl all sets like a silver. And the next morning I got up and bright and early four dollars going up and I had a skunk in one. But the next one didn't have anything and the third one had a red fox. After that I I, uh, I hung out with Ellen Pete Rickers all the time because he couldn't get rid of me and I was like a shadow. He was my hero. This coyote trapping package is all of the tools you need to get out in the field successfully trapping coyotes. You're getting all the basic equipment necessary to get quality results out on the line. You'll also receive an instructional DVD that will show you how to start handling the predators on your land with proven predation trapping methods. Start your own adventure today with our coyote predation package. Proven products equals proven conservation and see all of our great wildlife control solutions at NorthAmericanTrapper.com today.
tie up that trap set and night lapsed. So that when that trap goes, I tighten up the tension pretty good. But just about where it'll bear the total weight of a fox or a coyote. He's got to pull his foot, full weight on it before it goes. If you get them too light, sometimes they'll trip and you'll get a toe catch. You don't want it to go until he puts his full weight on it. And he'll test that first when he reaches out for it. He goes like that. He doesn't put his foot right down on it. So I like them up in the air like that. Keeps your moss up there and keeps it dry. And you want you don't want much water in your spring hole. No more than an inch at the most. This trap goes, it doesn't really matter which way you set the dog. You can set it this way, you can set it that way. It doesn't matter. The trap doesn't really have to be bedded like in a uh, dry set. Got a nice wet lead here. Cover this trap. Now some guys will say, well, if you got it set in the water, you really don't have to cover that trap. Well, I'm here to tell you, you better cover the trap. I don't think there's anybody in modern times that's caught any more foxes and coyotes and cats than I have in spring hole sets and fisher too. It's one of my pet sets. As far as I'm concerned, I have a higher catch ratio on this set than any other set I make. This set goes right, the jaw, go, jaw goes right dead against your landing rock here. Right on top of it. You want the set, trap set under there where it's almost level with the water. Silt those leaves in, then you got kind of a dry look. A fox or a coyote, they hit it faster. Your, your lure stick goes right on the outside jaw. It's pushed down in two inches out of the water, above the water. Two inches, no more. If you have it up too high, the animal can stand here, he can put his nose over on it, he won't take that final step. Push it down in. You can even adjust this until you know which foot you want to catch him by. You can catch him by the left front foot or the right front foot. All you got to do is bend it one way or the other. Simple as that. I usually set it this dead center. No more than two inches out of the water. Now, what I use with most of these sets is a Eddie Good Lure of Duel. What I use with most of them is because I catch a lot of fish in them. And it's a good all around lure for coyotes or foxes, cats, and anything else, and skunk essence. And if I was using these where I had a large amount of coon, which we don't have here, I would probably be making a lot of these with a salmon oil, some kind of liquid lure that I can pour down in that hole. But I just happen to have a mold up with a skunk essence and I do anything else. And I want to say right here, you don't want pure skunk essence. If you've got any of the rest of my videos, like my Fisher video, I tell you how to reduce that stuff down. And you reduce it down 15 to 1, 15 parts of peanut oil, one part a skunk. In other words, that makes you a pint of skunk essence. One part of skunk, 15 parts of peanut oil. Peanut oil, is, there's only three oils you can mix skunk essence with that will improve it. Any other oil will destroy it. But the best one is, is peanut oil. It's very high in vitamin E. It's a preservative. It'll make your skunk essence last forever. And it'll extend it and won't break it down. I carry this in a, flat, in a paper bag. I carry them in four ounce bottles. When I unzip the bag, I take my finger Keep it on the outside of the bag so I don't get it on my fingers. I take and put just a few drops in there, just a little squirt. Okay, we'll put our scope back in our pocket here and we'll have it come. Now you go over here around these rocks, get your little piece of moss, and you want to stay away from the spongy stuff. Pick this real flat stuff you get on top of the stones. You don't want much sponge. Double it out, kind of squeeze it out, squeeze that water out. That goes right on top of your pan like that. <clears throat> That's it. Don't let any part of that chain or that trap be seen under the water. Because a fox or a coyote will study that sucker before he takes that final step on it. These are effective for just about any animal ears. I've even caught mink in these. But in real years, no reason that you should catch a mink with skunk essence. But once in a while you do, but I don't advise you to make a habit of it. That's it. We're out of here. Get a little drop of skunk essence on your hands. If you do, just grab one of these hemlocks. Grab the hemlock or your hands through it a couple times. Completely neutralize that skunk essence. Well, that's the end of the show today. Uh, you know, being able to follow Johnny, as I've said previously, was uh, one of the high points of my outdoor filming career. And being able to bring that footage to you here is 
is definitely a joy for me and I hope you enjoyed it. But the methods, techniques he's showing you, anytime you have big wood situations, the hole in the tree set, the, you know, basically his set, the spring hole set, are gonna work for you. And, and the biggest thing is having patience. Put the traps in the ground and wait for the animals to come by and you will definitely be successful as well. If you need any products for that, make sure you go to NorthAmericanTrapper.com. We've got pretty much everything that you need to help you get started for success out in the field. Proven products equals proven conservation, and we'll see you next time.